I want you to welcome brand new Triple Diamond Directs from Springfield, Missouri. And Donna Stewart! We love you. Here's Donna. I'd like to share a poem with you that Dexter Yeager shared with us many years ago. It's called Anyway. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people accuse you of arterial motive. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. The biggest people with the biggest ideas will be shot down by the smallest people with the smallest brain. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs, but follow only top dogs. Fight for some underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. Give the world the best you've got, and you get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you've got anyway. And you know, when I read that poem, it, I think, says a lot about the people that are successful in this business, that they did it anyway. I remember many years ago, probably seven, eight years ago, which is a long time ago sometimes, for some of us in this business, when we'd sit around with Bill and Hal and, and they'd dream build with Kenny and I when we were the only diamonds that they had. But someday we'd fill a coliseum of people. And you know, we've done that. You know what we've realized this weekend? We're only just beginning. We're only just beginning. Take what you've got this weekend and, and take it home and, and um, pass the dream on. The world needs what we have. The world really needs what you have, and you've got to pass it on. We love you, and God bless you, and I just pray that God just keep us free. Thank you. All right. Ask Don and I in various different ways what makes us tick and what makes us roll and, and keep going in this business. And it's always been a struggle with Don and I to explain to you from a personal standpoint where Don and I are coming from. But just give you a quick, most of you have heard our story, but we're like every other diamond on you've heard on this stage. We've not always told you the whole truth. We've kind of held some of it back because it's something sometimes that Don and I are and other diamonds are not able to share with you. Not because it's some embarrassing moment or whatever. It's just hard to talk about. But when Don and I, before this business came along, I had spent 10 years in the home building business. And in the home building business, I, like a lot of you in this room, had put most of my life into what I was doing. A lot of you are here this weekend and you're, you're contemplating, should I, should I really give this a thought? Or should I keep on the path that I've been rolling on in the last 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years? Do I want to throw that all to the wind and start all over? And that's exactly where Don and I were when this business came along. I'd been involved in the business, for a home building business, for 10 years. And I'm a competitor. I'm a scrapper. And, and one thing led to the other. And over a period of time, I got myself to a situation where really more than anything else, I was good at borrowing money. And I guess as long as you can borrow money, you're all right. But there came a time in the early, in early 1980s, in 1980 and late in the 70, in 79, where all of a sudden I started recognizing that things were not going to go the way that I had thought that they had, were going to go based on the last 10 years. My plan, I thought, was set in concrete. I didn't understand that you don't set plans in concrete, that you set your goals in concrete. Plans are going to change. I didn't understand those business principles. But I was all wrapped up in the home building business, like a lot of you are in various different careers. And all of a sudden, because of situations that were beyond my control, the carpet was pulled out from under my feet. I can't tell you it happened all in one day. It happened over a period of time. There was many times in 1978 and 79 where I 
I felt like that I, w I was losing control. And, and like anybody who's a fighter, I, I, I get shaken up a little. And, and I, and I kind of walk around for a few days and, and try to shake it off and, and, and try to get back up. And I got back up. And then it seemed like it was nothing but three months later and all of a sudden I was something beat me up again. A, a bank loan was called or a house closing fell through or whatever. And all of a sudden I was kind of shaken up again and I'd walk around for a week or two and I'd try to work it off and shake it off and get my attitude right. Didn't know anything about books or tapes or anything that or association with some winners. It was just me. And then it got to be a point where all of a sudden it was happening every 30 days. And then it got to be a point where it was happening every week. And by the time February 1980 came, I was to a point where I was, I was hard pressed, folks, to get back up again. Ten years of work and effort were going down the tubes. Everything that I had dreamed of was going down the tubes. And I was always in front of Donna trying to keep a good attitude and, and trying to play the, uh, I guess, male ego or whatever. I, I had it, and I, and I didn't share a lot of it with Donna. And all of a sudden, as things got worse, the quieter I got at home. Finally, somewhere, and I don't remember exactly the day, it was in February of 1980, I came home from work just like any other day. And just like any other day, I didn't walk into the house and give Donna a kiss and say hello or anything. I just walked in. And like every other day, I went into the bedroom, and usually I went in, and I was going to shower and get cleaned up because in the construction business, you get a little dirty. But on this day, I'd been in there for a little while. And finally, Donna walked into that bedroom. And when she walked into that bedroom, she didn't see a husband and knew where he was going anymore. She seen a husband who had a broken spirit. Bill, Donna and I, I guess maybe not Donna, but I recognize at that point I was on the verge of losing everything. And folks, I don't know how you all handle situations like that, but I recognize that everything I'd spent 10 years working for was going down the drain. And I didn't know how to work. All of a sudden, I was out of control. This man who always, and you all look at him and Don, and you think we're always in control, and we know where we're going. Well, I was out of control. I had no idea for the time of my life where I was going. And all of a sudden, somewhere in March of 1980, a friend of mine named Paul, and a friend of ours, Paul and Nikki Stoddard, ended up giving us a call. I can't tell you that we jumped at what Paul was talking about. Actually, as most of you know, it was more convenience and out of helping Paul out. Even at that point, it was, yeah, we'll help Paul out. I wasn't about to admit that. I just admitted to my wife that I was losing everything. I was not going to admit that to Paul. Paul still looked at me as up on this pedestal. He's doing good. He'd love this business. I heard somebody say this weekend, I don't remember which speaker it was, but I heard one of them say in their story, and it might even been one of the diamonds. I heard pieces and bits of different diamonds, but I heard somebody say that when one door closes, there's a window that opens. And I didn't know it at the time, and some of you are this weekend, and you don't know that this is your window that's opening this weekend. I just pray to God that you don't close it. You walk through the, or you crawl through the window. Some of you may have to get off your stinking thinking status and get on your knees and crawl through the window. But that's exactly where Don and I were. I had status, I looked good, I smelled good, I had a big ego, I was looking good, I was 27 years old, built more houses than anybody in Springfield, I was a little fish, or a big fish in a small sea, I looked good. Everybody liked Ken Stewart, they knew who I was. Paul showed me this plan. Paul will never know, no matter how many times he hears us, Don and I talk, he'll never know, Paul and Nikki will never know how much they changed our life by making that one call that they were afraid to make. 
They'll never know how many people, thousands and hundreds of thousands, and if it's up to Don and I, and God will give us the time, it will literally be millions upon millions upon millions of people that Don and I will affect and realize that they got the potential to do whatever in life that they want to do. And it came from one phone call from a guy making six bucks an hour who was scared. And that's Paul and Nikki Starter. You see, even though Don and I were beat down, even though Don and I, we still had a lot of dreams, some of you are sitting here saying, I just can't find a dream. I can't imagine any idiot can't kind of come up with a dream. God can't give every one of you dreams. I don't know what it is. Some of you think, well, I just don't want a Cadillac. I don't care if you want a Cadillac. Maybe what you need is just the recognition of this business to get you cranked up. For somebody to pat you on the back of the back and say, you're worth something. You can do it. We love you. We know you can go on. Maybe some of you are in this business because you've never found a church that, that is good as this business, that makes you feel good, that uplifts the Lord like this business does. Not that this should replace the church. Keep searching. But at the same time, this might be a helping hand. It might be a step getting you going the right direction. Some of you in the room have financial problems and are not even sharp enough to figure it out. You think that paying payments for all your cars and sitting there paying the minimum on your Visa card and you look at somebody and say, I'm doing just fine. Some of you are sending your wife to work now because you can't cut it anymore and you're saying, I'm doing just fine. Let me tell you something, you ain't doing just fine. You need to start dreaming. You need to start realizing that there is a better life out there than what you're doing. You need to realize, men in this room, you ain't cutting it. Don and I had dreams, and we still had them, even though we were beat down. And boy, I tell you, it was rough for us to get back up. But a dream without an opportunity is not worth a whole lot. And Paul and Nikki Starter shared with us an opportunity. I think one of the struggles we had in the first 90 days is trying to balance out opportunity with our dreams. We weren't quite sure what our dreams were, but we knew that the what we had now, and we weren't short, quite sure of this opportunity. But all of a sudden, we started over about a 90, 120 day period, we started recognizing that we had an opportunity to work. I can't imagine anybody looking at you and saying, damn, will it work? I wonder if it'll work. It'll work for anybody that wants to work it. It ain't going to give you something for nothing. It's an opportunity. When I got in this business, I didn't want to have the attitude of give me something for nothing. All I want is the opportunity. Don and I realized for the first time in our life that we were going to have to get our act together. We realized that all of a sudden, okay, we can't complain anymore. We got an opportunity. We know what we want, or we're at least going in the direction we think we know what we want. And this is where you're at. You've got the opportunity. God give you dreams. And if you want it, you still don't know what they are, just get on your knees. Pray about it, and I guarantee you, you'll end up, they'll be like, oh, now I got it. No, you already had it. He just led you to see it again. All of a sudden, Don and I, for the first time, after beating beat, them beat down slowly and slowly and slowly, all of a sudden we recognized there was no room for any more complaining in our lives. Some of you are still moaning and groaning. My upline won't help me. Well, they said this to me. Well, they did this. My shoe spray can's got a dent in it. And you're sitting here for uh, in an opportunity to become financially independent. And you're all hung up on what my upline said this to me. I guarantee you I would have quit the first 30 days or 30 or 90 days if I listened to everything my upline said that I didn't take right. This is the end of side one. Please turn the cassette over for the continuation of this program. Some of you need to grow up and realize that life just don't work that way. There, there was no more blaming. All of a sudden I realized I can't blame not being able to succeed in this business because of financial situations or economical situations controlled by the government. I can't blame anybody. If I don't make it in this business, I cannot blame nobody but me. Some of you are, listen, you all listen. There's some of you in this room, some of you in this room, here's what you're saying. You're blaming your boss 
because he takes 60, 70, 80 hours out of your schedule and you're blaming him for your failure in this business. It ain't his fault. You need to get off your hind horse and move on. If you got an extra two hours a week, you can build this business, period, and quit blaming everybody else. Don't blame it on time. I ain't got no time. I mean, you ain't got no time. You need to quit complaining. You need to quit blaming. You need to quit crying. God was telling Don and I, in no uncertain terms, I've given you a dream, and I've given you an opportunity. And I want to tell you folks, I don't believe that God put you in here for any other reason than to let you know you've got a dream, and you've got an opportunity. Now, look yourself in the mirror. I ain't going to do it for you. I've given you the ability to do it. Now go out and claim your victory and get the job done now. Some of you are saying, some of you are saying, I'm scared. Well, I'm afraid. I wonder what they're going to say. You don't need to give a rip what they're going to say. They don't care. They don't care. Don and I were scared. I could look at myself just the way you Well, I can't talk to people. I could have said to Paul, Paul, it looks good, and most people could do it, but I just, I just am afraid to talk to people. If you'll respond to the God-given dream, I guarantee you that fear will lead you big time. It ain't going to hang around very long. Well, Paul Stoddard, Jimmy Dunn, I don't know how to dress. First meeting Jimmy Dunn ever did with me, he looked at me and says, this way you're going to dress for the meeting? I could have said, well, I don't like the way he said that. I'm going to quit. Who wins? Who loses? I'll quit and show you and I'll be a failure. That'll prove to you. I could have said I can't build it because I don't have a high school diploma. My dream was bigger than the excuses. And your dream needs to be that big. Bit. I, hey, Kenny. Or hey, Paul. I don't know how to run a business. I could have said that. Everybody, my home building business. You know how I run my home building business? Some of you ain't figured this out yet. I was running my home building business out of my hip pocket. I carried checks around. I didn't keep track of the stubs. I didn't keep track of anything. Man, if you want to know how to float them, I can float them. I know how that works. Some of you are still trying to blame the blank bank when you're talking to your upline. That's the bank's fault. I don't know what happened. But Don and I had an opportunity to help us help ourselves. And you know what's strange? This is where some of you are having a hand, having a hard time with this business. And I don't mean to say this just because it sounds good. But Don and I had an opportunity to help ourselves, and when we realized that the only way that we were going to help ourselves was by helping other people, at that point. And if you're looking for a secret, this is one of the major ones. Some of you want to think and do just as you do and yet be diamond. Don and I recognized if we were going to go diamond, we had to have a lot of people that wanted some help go down in there, humble ourselves, get down there with them, relate with them, help them the very best we can. And by doing that, we would succeed. And by them coming up, they would succeed. By our example, they would succeed. We had to learn that what, now listen to this. We had to learn that what motivates us not always motivates others. Some of you are saying, I just can't get anybody to listen to me. That's because you're trying to motivate them based on just what you want. What you want ain't big enough in the first place. Donna and I had to dream bigger. By dreaming bigger, we, will, we were able to relate to more people. We started understanding we got to see things. Some of you are so hung up on yourself, you haven't got time to look at your group and look for their side and look up and see what they see. Don and I learned that in the first six months of this business. Where are they coming from? How do they perceive this? Don and I learned how to talk about fishing. This seems like simple stuff, but it's true. 
Don and I learned to talk about things that we weren't interested in talking about. I never liked to fish. But if everybody liked to fish, I'm going to learn how to like to fish. It's a small price to pay to me. I, don't, I never liked to hunt. But if my downline likes to hunt, we're going to learn how to talk about hunting. Who wants to hit a ball and then walk and hit it again? Me! It'll make you rich! Nobody in the Midwest wants to go up to New York and get all messed up, get somebody stealing everything from me and all that. Me! Because I found out I got a group, their biggest dream is to walk down Fifth Avenue. I didn't want to walk down Fifth Avenue, but if that's what it takes to get other people motivated, I'm going to do it because I'm helping other people. Do I want to do that? No, but if that helps them, I'm doing it. Helping other people. We learn by listening to people. We learned what hurt, what kind of hurts people have. Folks, I realize there's a lot of you in this room. Really, hurt. I know you're hurt. I know that you have things in your life, skeletons in your closet, things that were created 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago in your life that you're still carrying around. Folks, we're a forgiving group. And if we can forgive you, surely to God, you can forgive yourself. God's already forgiven you. You don't need to live with that kind of thought in your mind. Let's start a new day. Let's go on. Some of you are making judgments about your husband. Some of you are making judgments about your wife based on past performance. Let's start over. Let's start at zero. Let's go from here. Let's not worry about what happened yesterday. Don and I would not be on this stage today if we worried about what happened yesterday or the day before that or the day before that. I could have said, I can't build this business. I had my one shot. It was a home building, and I blew it. Thank God this opportunity came along. It helped us by understanding how people hurt. We started understanding people's fears. We started realizing that fears and dreams can't fit in the same We started realizing that those with fears are not dreaming big enough. Those with dreams don't have room for the fears. The bigger the dream, the less the fear. Don and I started realizing that as we help people that we're relating to people. You want to know what sponsoring is? It's relating to people. The more relating to the people, the more people you're going to sponsor. You need to quit sitting there thinking about how you are perceived by those people. Or need to do that and quit learning about, you know, yourself. If you follow what I'm saying, man, I said that, right? You get the idea. All these things making us stretch, understanding people and where they're coming from and their hurts and all those things. It made us grow. And some of you are saying it made you grow. You got a big organization. Yeah, we got a big organization, but you need to understand. Some of you still haven't figured this out. The kind of growth that I'm talking about is not in people in a network. Don and I grew by learning how to handle the rejection of people saying, this won't work. I can't believe you're involved in this business. The people that told that to us in 1980 are the same people today who got the same job and actually are probably 10% behind the lifestyle of what they were in 1980, and they're still telling me I couldn't do it because I can't handle the rejection. Somebody's got to pump the gas for my cars in this country. It just don't have to be me. Somebody's got to learn how to run a computer. It just don't have to be me. Somebody's got to sell this clothing I got on to me, but it don't have to be me. The people that are doing that are the people that got more fears and they got dreams. They're living their whole life based on the fears that they have instead of living their whole life based on the dreams that God's given them. Don and I determined we were going to answer to the dreams and not to the fears. Don and I realized we, had, we were challenged. We got to have a good attitude. Not all, you think we just tiptoed to the tulips and went triple? There's some of you in this room that challenged us big time. And we did our very best. And not always did we do the best, but we did the very best at the time to keep our attitude up. To stay level-headed. I'm, I, I, grew, I come into this business big time hot temper. Anybody in the construction business, I mean, flies off the handle like that. I had to get a handle on my temper. 
Somebody accused me one time of being a, a, a fighter and always looking for trouble. My nature. We had to learn to handle those things. We had to control who we listened to. Some of you, some of you in this room, you know, I don't understand. Some of you are going to go to your mom and dad, you know are negative, and go over to their house on Monday night and say, let me tell you about this weekend. Let me give you a good piece of advice. Stay away from them until you got some success under your belt. Quit trying to sponsor somebody who don't want to hear what you got to say. Cut it out. Don and I learned to get it together together, to understand each other and understand other people. So, as I wrap up, what's the formula for diamond? You want to know what the formula is? Here it is. If you're dreaming, you can't help but start talking. If you're talking, you can't help but start sponsoring. If you're sponsoring, you can't help but start growing. If you're growing, you can't help but start dreaming again. You want to know how we went EDC? We were dreaming. And because we were dreaming, we were talking. And because we were talking, we were sponsoring. And because we were sponsoring, we were growing. You want to know how we went double? We were dreaming. And because we were dreaming, we started talking. We were talking, we started sponsoring. And because we sponsored, we started growing. You want to know how we went triple? We started dreaming. We started talking. We started sponsoring. We started growing. And we started dreaming. We're not there yet, but I can tell you that when we go crown, we'll have to start dreaming. We'll have to start talking. We'll have to start sponsoring. We'll have to start growing. And then we'll have to start dreaming. The biggest fear I have in life is that I get to a point in my life where I quit dreaming. Ben Franklin said it, and it is still true, and you've all heard it, the day a man, he didn't say quite this way, but he says, most men in this country start stop dreaming by the time they spend the next 40 years of their life just wear, waiting around, waiting for a coffin to be buried. This cat ain't going to have that happen to him. I'm going to be dreaming till the day I drop. And God's going to look at me and say, well done, son. And he can say the same thing to you. I'm telling you folks, there ain't a one of you in this room that can't grace this stage this time next year. It just takes night after night after night after night after night after night after night of uh, showing this plan. You're saying, well, I don't get any yeses. I don't give a rip. Just keep showing the plan. Something good's going to happen to you. And I guarantee you we'll walk not only beaches in Hawaii, not only beaches in Monaco, but we'll walk beaches all over this world. And we won't do it with 23 credit cards maxed out. Come and join our world. We love you.